well. I want us to take a short reading from the book of Psalms, chapter 127. It says, if God's grace doesn't help the builders, they will labor in vain to build a house. If God's mercy doesn't protect the city, all the centuries will circle it in vain. It's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night, toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough. Now God can provide. I want you to see this. It says God can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep. Now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it. Also, by doing this, you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel. Then, don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section. Hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here. And then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too. You are blessed. Stay blessed. This is what God is doing. There is a revolution. He says, I will build my church. Not a church. Not their church. Many people can build their church, but I will build my church according to a heavenly pattern. And he told Moses, he said, ensure that you build according to pattern. Bible says, every house is built by some man, but God is the builder of all things. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb, worthy, worthy is the Lamb, worthy, worthy is the Lamb, holy. Holy is the Lamb, holy, holy is the Lamb, faithful. Mighty, mighty, mighty is the Lamb, mighty, mighty is the Lamb. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Take my body, my soul. My spirit, breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. It's a powerful song. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Breathe on me. Yeah. Breathe on me Breathe on me It is the breath of the Almighty that make men of understanding Breathe, Breathe on me Breathe on me Breathe on me Breathe on me, Breathe on me. Breathe on me. 
back my life on me I look to you for I back my life on me Sing it from your heart Lord, I thank my breed on me. Lord, I look to you for life. I thank my life for life. One more time. Lord, I thank my life for life. of desperation Love. 
Lamb of God, we worship you. Lamb of God, we worship you. Lamb of God, we worship you. Shalom, shalom, koinonia. Hey, peace be to you. When Messiah comes to take us home, may his praise be found. Shalom, Shalom, the bride of Christ. Hey, peace be to you. Now the Messiah has come to take us home. May his praise. Presence alone can convict and change that glory. <laughs> shalom, 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 coin on it. His presence comes to change. Don't doubt what you are experiencing. But in His presence, taking place in the spirit I sense a very strong healing anointing in this place I am the Lord your healer I sent my word and it healed your disease I am the Lord your healer I am the Lord the Lord is healing sick bodies right now that he let thee I am the Lord your healer I said my word 
services through the week were in strange seasons of the glory because God is opening portals God is opening scrolls showing us the mysteries of the kingdom Hallelujah Just singing, this is a sound from heaven. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! May you hear this 
sound in your spirit. Ale, ale. Prophesied as I was commanded. Hallelujah. Please follow me instrumentally. I'm not singing. It's a chant in the spirit. Hallelujah. upon the wings of this sound oh great one see now a shake na 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 see ne de de go so na 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 right upon the wings of this sound yeah may it echo in your spirit man When the shofar blows, it's a sign that the season is Thank you, Jesus. All the world is calling your name, Emmanuel. When you come to rest, this is a dimension of God that the church has lost. The meeting point between men and the presence of God, Emmanuel. And the church will see your holy face, Emmanuel. When you come to reign, Hallelujah. You have won. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. Just that part, sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won. Hallelujah. You want it all for me. 
you participate in the worship it's part of the teaching the presence of God is heavy and mighty in this place This is the part of the song that I like. of your presence oh God there is a strange wind physical wind physical wind that I see in the spirit and it's going to blow inside this place a real physical wind you will feel it start happening right now a real wind is the wind of the spirit a real physical wind physical wind blow oh great wind even as I've seen in the spirit a real physical wind. Changing. Transforming. I don't mind waiting. We're not in a hurry. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on you, Lord. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. For who is there? There's no one beside you. I lead the earth to worship you. Who is there like you? There's no one beside you. I lead the earth. Look, the Lord is doing something tonight. Let's just flow with what the Holy Spirit is doing. Who is there like you? There's 
no one beside you. I lead the earth to worship you. Who is there like you? There's no one beside you. I lead the earth. I lead the earth to Jesus, this is what this is all about, and we give you the glory. We thank you for your mighty presence. We thank you for the miracles, for the healing. Thank you because you're already changing the mindsets of people. Doing what mortal words cannot articulate. Jesus. Something special. Supernatural. About the name. Something happens when we call his name. Something happens when I mention your name. Hallelujah. Spirit of the living God, we submit to what you are doing. I will praise the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne. Sam, help me. I, I will, will worship him and give, and give a praise to, to him alone. He who was and is and is to come, I will sing before his throne forever. And they bow down and they sing holy. Yes, we sing holy. And we are sons and daughters. We praise you now and we cry holy. Yes, we cry. Holy. I will praise the Lamb. I will praise the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne. I will worship Him. I will worship Him and give the praise to Him alone. He who was in the earth. Hallelujah. Before is strong forever and never. Your holy, 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 yeah, and holy, everybody. Raise your voice and sing. There's no one like you, Lord. There's no one like you, Lord. No can compare to you. Separate and sanctify. What are you for the praise? And what your glory, God? 
we will bow before you and raise our voice and say, She is so holy. Somebody worship me. Lord, if this is all you do with us tonight, we are grateful. There is only so much we know about the presence of God and its power to change. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Bless us, oh God, tonight. We're not ashamed to bask in your presence. This is the place of true power. This is the place where burdens are lifted. This is where you are separating men. worship him your flesh may be weak but there is an ascendance that is happening to your spirit sing hallelujah hallelujah to the Lord and say I'm available Lord I'm available pray it turn it to, into a, a solemn prayer you're with him alone tonight I know we are here corporately I'm truly available even if this is your first time tonight This is how to walk in the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Let me tell you what happens to you when you are exposed to God's presence. Your flesh will start fighting you. Your mortal physical body we start finding excuses as to why you are tired is because something is happening many of us have not mastered the art of taming the flesh to stay in the presence of god once you raise a worship song you suddenly begin to feel i'm tired i need to I, i'm looking for something it's not like you're really tired brothers and sisters no flesh can stand in his presence when your flesh is compelled to submit to the influence of his presence, you will become a wonder. His power can flow through you. The energy, the ability of the spirit. You don't just need a transformation of the mind. 
you need a total alignment an alignment where something happens to you not just in your spirit not just in your soul but your physical body your physical body when you bask in the glory of God I'm telling you it affects your physical body your mortal body every fiber of your cell every fiber of your blood your body comes under the influence of that cardboard that weight of his glory that's what will melt every sickness that's what will set people free hallelujah please be seated good evening and god bless you if you can sit down if you cannot the meeting is already on. I love to worship and I love to praise. I bow before you. Lifting you I I worship your holy name. I love to worship. I love to praise. I bow before you. Lifting you high. You are being renewed. Listen to me, please. You are being changed. These seats are vacant. Can we have one or two people occupy these seats, please? Hallelujah. Please fill up every vacant seat. Just come quietly, find a place and sit. God bless all of you standing. You may be standing now, but I assure you, a day will come you will sit. Yeah, the Bible says the word is able to give you an inheritance. Lord, if you're healing people in this season, don't do it without me. Mali Paradashia. Don't do it without me. Oh Lord, if you're changing cities in this season, please don't do it without me. That's always my prayer. Don't do it without me. Oh Lord, as you're leading people into your glory don't do without me don't do it without me hallelujah see listen if you take seriously the things i'm teaching you it will shock you what you will become is a programming listen to me what you are receiving is a programming is making you become something is aligning you spiritually so that the reality of the kingdom can find expression through you this is what god desires not just when you are standing on stage hallelujah there is an alignment through the songs even if you don't hear anything the atmosphere does something to you there is a change the presence of God this is the factor that you need in your life brothers and sisters power is not enough to change people There is, there is a way you can align to the Holy Ghost. 
that you become a living wonder. Your physical, mortal body carries heaven. Hallelujah. And that everywhere you go, you become an envoy. I did a teaching, envoys of his presence. You don't have all the time to start teaching people sermons, brothers and sisters. There are times you will need to let the presence alone speak. Oh, 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 oh. He has become our passion in this place. It pays to walk with God. It pays. God is speaking to someone here. Tonight, you need to win the war in your heart and give up the flesh. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm going to make an altar call right now. Hallelujah. There are people who have been fighting to submit totally to the Spirit. And he's giving the devil access to destroy your life. You know what I'm talking about. There are so many of you outside. There are many of us inside. Hallelujah. This is what is keeping many of us in bondages. This is what gives the devil legal access. Tonight. Tonight. I'm going to make an altar call right now. Even before I continue. Don't mind what I'm doing. Let me just do my stupid thing on the stage. This is the Holy Ghost doing what he's doing. This is koinonia. Hallelujah. There are people who need to win this war tonight. The struggle is over. You, you can't keep fighting with destiny forever. You may be sitting and people may be looking at you, but we're struggling. There is this war between Cain and Abel. The spirit and the flesh. Hallelujah. As I count three, I want those people to get up, jump up on your feet and come out here right now. One. Lord, if you're healing people in this season, don't do without me. Don't do it without me. Please, if you're not sure of why you're here, go back to your seat and think again. Please, we're not, we're not playing games. We're really, look at me, hold on. Praise God. I, I appreciate your sincerity, but we're not playing games. If you're coming out here, you are really telling the Lord, I'm tired. I'm tired. Win this war tonight. I make up my mind for real. Hallelujah. Just come, there's still some space. I will lay down my idols and thrones I have made. And all that has taken my heart, Lord, I will bow, Lord, I will bow to you. Listen, Jesus said something. He said, Satan cometh to me and does not find anything. Satan cometh to me. Many of us, it's not that we don't love God. This has been my message. He is not a priority. There are so many things we believe that deserve our time and our attention. Because we live in a society that convinces us that spirituality makes us failure. Who can compare to you? Hmm. Great is the measure of your royalty, O oh, morning star, you truly are. Listen, look at me, those of you coming out. You can win this war tonight and say, Lord, take over.
my life. Take over. I don't care who is watching me. I'm, I'm sick and tired of this fake life. There are many of you who are supposed to join them. You're sitting smiling and the Holy Ghost is talking to you and saying this is serious business. Join them quickly. There are many of you outside. Lord, you are everything to me. He's my treasure, my priority. Who can compare to him? Nobody. Great is the measure of his royalty. Oh, morning star, you truly are everything. Listen, if that Isaac in your life that makes God of less value does not leave you. You will never experience the power of God. Take it from me. Don't let anybody fool you. I've told you there are some things in the kingdom that are not gifts. They are rewards for serious people. It's part of the justice system of heaven. For many of us, it's boyfriend and girlfriend that won't let us get serious with God. For many of us, it's money Ah, you want money. For many of us, we are just careless and vulnerable. And it may not be your fault. We came from backgrounds where priority to the things of God is seen as being strange. But let me tell you something. When you come for koinonia, what you see is a new culture. You don't see Yoruba culture here or Hausa culture or Igbo culture, or, or another culture, South-South culture. We divorce those things to pick the excellency of the culture of the kingdom. And in a kingdom, there is no democracy. The entire citizens look up to the king and his agenda. Many of you believe in God. Tonight, will you submit to his government? This is the true place of power. Take me to the place, the place, the place you, you are. It's the secret place. That's where I want to be. I tell you, you will command power and authority when you stand in that realm. The place you are. The secret place. Those of you standing, can you sing it with me? Take me to the place. Come on. Take me to the place. The place you are. The place you are. The secret place. That's where I want to be. That's where I want to be. There are many of you that need to take your phone, look at me, and send polite but serious text messages to certain people and say, I've been playing with the issue of God being my priority, but right now, Mr. Man, I mean business. See, let me tell you, if you are ashamed of this, I can guarantee you, brothers, and many of our parents were ashamed of this decision and they are paying for it bitterly. They went to school, but they are still paying. The remedy from the tragedy that comes with this system, this fallen system, is to walk in the spirit. Lift your hands, those of you in front, and cry your heart to God. Those of us seated, join them. In one minute, say, Lord, I take you seriously from today. Pray, take away every Isaac, oh God, that will not stop me from being serious. Some of you are ashamed of the mockery that comes with carrying the cross. Pray 
for i am not ashamed of the gospel it is the power of god unto salvation those of you standing cry come on this is between you and god this is your koinonia tonight lord i know you desire to use me but what is this weight it says seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight every weight every weight every weight take it oh god take it whatever it is and mean it from your heart ladies pray lord take it away so that i can rise to a realm higher than what i have seen so that i will command the authority of the kingdom so that i will be trusted with the mysteries of the kingdom the bible says the secrets of the lord are not with them that are born again with them that fear him them that fear him he will show them his covenants let your christianity last let your christianity last no mood swings with god kill it tonight no mood swings with god i love you whether there's money or not i love you whether there's job or not come on pray i love you whether there's marriage or not children or not academics or not carry over or not lord you are more precious than silver lord you are more costly than gold sing it with me lord more beautiful than diamond there is nothing hallelujah our time is fast spent if this is all we do tonight no problem i wanted to teach something about the mysteries of the kingdom one of the mysteries of the kingdom is the mystery of having more in the kingdom you have more by losing what you have are you hearing what I'm saying? It's a strange mystery. It says, whosoever loves his life will lose it. But whosoever loses it, you want power, lose the strength you have in yourself and you will get a higher one. You want wisdom, lose the one you have. Break it like an alabaster box and pour it on his feet and say, Lord, take the intellect I know I went to school, but I can roll on the floor for the excellency of another. You must lose what you currently have. Otherwise, you will never get it. A higher dimension. I pray for you. Say after me, those of you standing, Lord Jesus, I mean business with you. Many of you, as you are praying, the power of the Holy Ghost will come strong upon you. Because this is what the Holy Ghost has been waiting for. He's been seeking you for a long time. Hallelujah. I mean business with you. I make up my mind tonight that you are my priority. I not only believe in Jesus, I submit to the government of heaven every Isaac in my life that stops me from rising higher I give it tonight in the name of Jesus father I pray for these ones in the name of Jesus they have come because they mean business with you transform them some of them are men of God some of them are women of God some of them are great leaders some of them have seen your hand in a measure. I pray in the name that is above all names. Help them. In the name of Jesus. May grace to lose what you have be given to you. 
that you will get something higher that nothing in this earth can compare with it i break every ungodly association look at me and i announce this to everybody hear me inside and outside you are not truly born again if your association does not change i'm going to repeat it you are not truly born again if your association especially the association that kept you in sin there's no such thing that i'm born again and my best friend is still that person i will change him uh -uh. when it was time for moses to be changed he left egypt and went and stayed with god was trained when he had that stature god sent him back to egypt as a deliverer you don't stay in egypt and get transformed hallelujah there are many of us you have three or four people your friends they drag a lady and they are coming to sleep with her and you are there you are a christian but you don't you don't like it but there's nothing that can be done about it and then you are in the room there you are watching you didn't sleep with the lady but a seed has been sown in your life you are going to go and pray and you are thinking of all kinds of things your spiritual stability has been distorted and it will take a long time for you to get back your footing but i pray for you tonight the hand of the almighty is upon you you will leave this place transformed please go back to your seat give me 15 minutes or so and we'll be and then Two meetings now, God has been interrupting what we are doing in this place. The message I preached last week was not even the message that I plan to preach this week again. And every time you see God stepping in like that, it's because we are entering seasons. I told us about the seasons of greatness. Like Noah, I will keep announcing it until we step into the reality of it. Noah kept saying something kept saying something and this is not just empty confession hallelujah grant us grace oh god in the name of the lord jesus christ can we just look at something small We're talking about the mysteries of the kingdom. Um, for time's sake, our time is already gone. I will just pick something really, just an aspect of what I want to share. Um, and then we'll just pray. I want to teach us tonight how to enforce the kingdom in our lives. How to enforce the kingdom. Matthew 6. Ah, Jesus inspires me. Goodness. I began to read this, the parables of Jesus. And I mean, those parables were just hitting me like arrows with mysteries. Hallelujah. If you're ever caught up to heaven or the realm of the spirit, and you ever see God or angels, the proof that you truly saw God or anything divine is that you will return with more questions than the answers you got. You will come back with a lot of information, but you will come back so confused. Your dependence in the Holy Spirit will increase as a matter of life and death because of the mysteries Brothers and sisters, this kingdom is a kingdom of mysteries. I shared with us already that a mystery 
is a secret truth. A mystery is a hidden truth. Hidden truth. Hidden truth. There are some mysteries that we have to really look at. We may not, we can't touch all of them. That's to say we are reading, we are exploring the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. But there are a few mysteries we have to touch. One of it is enforcing the kingdom. Maybe next week we'll discuss the mystery of marriage. Not relationship and family talk at all. The mystery of marriage. The Bible calls it a great mystery. Ephesians. That means no unbeliever can truly understand marriage. It's not about age. Anything that is a mystery is only given to the sons of the kingdom to understand. Hmm. He said it is given unto you to know the mysteries. So men can see, the Bible says, so that they seeing, they may not see, they can't understand. Hearing, but they will not get it. But there is a mystery. When you understand this, you must be a good husband. The mystery of marriage. When you understand it, you must be a good wife. Whether you pick a wife from Borno and a husband from Niger Delta, no problem. A great mystery. Paul, there were few things in the Bible that Paul called a great mystery. He said, behold, I show you a mystery. And I told us last week that there are certain people by the election of grace, they are called stewards of the mysteries of God. Stewards, stewards, custodians, caretakers of the mysteries of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Enforcing the kingdom. What is the kingdom? The influence of the king. What is the kingdom? The summation of the value system, the ideologies of the king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sorry, I may have to rush. I'm, I'm really, really sorry. Enforcing the kingdom talks about reproducing the reality of the king's culture. The king's culture. That's the best way to put it. A culture is the way of life of a people. Their way of operation. Reproducing the king's atmosphere. Reproducing the king's result. Forcing his decrees to work here and now in your life. There are principles. It's a mystery. Jesus was teaching the disciples how to pray. And he said something. Verse 6. Or let's start from verse, um, chapter 6 verse 9. After this manner therefore pray ye. Our father who art in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Verse 10 says what? Okay, it says, Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Three powerful words that sum up the desires of God for men in this system. Your kingdom. Replace that word kingdom with three words, please. You may not, if you can do it, wonderful. Number one, your culture. Number two, your principles. Number three, your influence. Culture, principle, influence. Please, all of us, listen. These teachings will make us kingdom people. This is Jesus telling the people that this is the Father's desire. Because he said, that I do nothing of my own as I see my Father. Your, what's the first word now? So, let's read it. Just in your mind, just put culture there. Are you ready? One to read. Your culture. Lord, let your culture, that way of life that makes heaven, heaven, I want it to come. That way of life, the culture of heaven, let it come. Number two, the principles of heaven. That means the formula by which heaven runs its activities. Let it be transported to this realm here and now. Please follow me. Number three, your influence. What is your influence? The jurisdiction of your control. 
the jurisdiction of your control, let it find expression. This is Jesus praying. This prayer was not just something that they are supposed to be praying and reciting every day. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. This and that and that. And that. All those things are just games. Jesus was saying something very serious. The Bible says the spirit searches the mind of God. And in searching the mind of God, he said, your culture, your principles, your influence, let it come. You see why we sing songs like your kingdom reign? Are you following me now? Enforcing the kingdom. What does it mean to enforce the kingdom? It means to align yourself so that this prayer becomes answered in your life and across your territory enforcing the culture enforcing the kingdom hallelujah now this is very very important let me have somebody one lady benga come one lady can come anybody where are you from sir you're from kogi state stand here where are you from enugu thank you one yoruba person yoruba oh yeah one house are person real house are or not Katsina and or any of these people. Oh, yeah, now. People want to embarrass your people now. Now, watch this. You are from where, Oga? Katsina. Real Katsina. You are from Ondo, Kogi State. Watch this. These people represent different territories. Everybody say territory. You must understand this. I want to be very simple. I'm out of time. I know you, you may not remember what I'm saying, but you remember what I'm acting here. Are you getting my point? This lady is from the East, accustomed to the life and the culture of the East. Where the culture came from is not the issue, is that it's there now. Is that true? Are you following what I'm saying now? Uh -huh. This guy, listen, is from Kogi State. And there is a way, there is a culture, there is a life. Is that true? This lady is a Yoruba lady. Are you following me now? There is a culture. For instance, if her mother were to come here, you know how she's going to greet her, right? Is that true? This gentleman is from the north. He and his father can go, if, assuming he were not a believer, for instance, he and his father can go to the same mat and pray. And that's not disrespect. In fact, it's a sign of loyalty and commitment. Whereas in other cultures, when men are sitting down, women don't even come there. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, Jesus looks at these people with their different cultures and he says, when you pray, if you must become true citizens of the kingdom, pray that your kingdom overshadow what has been existing, that has tilted the minds of the people to behave in a way that closes the spirit from finding expression. Are you getting the prayer now? And so he said, for that to happen, you must pray that your kingdom that means when you get born again as an Igbo lady you don't come and negotiate with God and say Lord remember I'm Igbo I gave you my heart as Igbo so all through our walk where Igbo clashes with the kingdom you will shift for me and let's continue moving are you getting my point now the Katsina person says look Lord the way we do our things we are very very diplomatic about it don't bring any kingdom thing now what many believers want is that we take a culture right come into the kingdom when we come into the kingdom we now begin to enforce our culture please are you understanding what i'm saying we now begin to enforce our culture now not every aspect of culture is wrong i hope you know that but there are dangerous and devilish aspects of culture. And this culture was carved out by Babylon. This mystery that births and spews iniquity upon the face of the earth. So that when you keep practicing certain things, it permits the gates of hell to perpetually keep working in your life. Are you listening to me now? So although you are born again, there are still ordinances that are holding you back. And because you are not ready to subscribe. You are a believer. But you are not ready to 
bend and subscribe to a higher kingdom. Are you getting my point now? But when you come into Christ, you die. And let me tell you the revelation of that death. To die means you cease to honor everything you honored before him. That's the way of the cross. Are you getting my point now? And when you come out from the other end, you are naked. The Holy Ghost is supposed to now begin to introduce you to a new culture. Supervised by the king himself. Not the traditional ruler in your village. That's why he himself is called the king. Many people know the savior, but they have not met the king. And let me tell you, you will never walk as an ambassador in the kingdom until you encounter the king. Because ambassadors are the envoys that represent the ideologies of the king. Please, are you getting what I'm saying? So, I come in with my culture. I even become a pastor with this culture. And we carry all kinds of ideologies as we study scripture. Culture and the principles we have practiced now become the lens from which we judge and interpret scripture. Are you getting what I'm saying? So it corrupts the authenticity of what the spirit is about to do. That is the reason why when in Egypt, when they came out of Egypt, that's, I told you power is not enough to change people. They saw miracles. But the moment the going got tough, they said, remember that calf that Pharaoh used to build now that helped them during one war? Aaron, come and help us. Let's help ourselves here. This, maybe Moses is dead somewhere. God has killed him. You see that? Because they came out and they still brought Egypt with them. So when the going went tough, what happened? They negotiated with Egypt. It was not an Egyptian that built that calf, brothers and sisters. The same people. God's own Israel. This is how many of us are. We come out of the kingdom, but we have not left these things. This revelation, thy kingdom come, has not found expression in our lives. But when you come into the school of the spirit, the Lord now says, there is neither male nor female. There is neither Jew nor Gentile. What is the revelation of that? He's introducing you to a new kingdom that is not dependent on your gender. A new kingdom that is not dependent on your prior ideology. Swallow your pride tonight. Come to the school of the spirit. Don't you know in his hands are the mysteries of eternal life. It's a little here, a little dear, and soon your day will dawn. It's changing everything in obedience to Christ. When Jesus was walking, the Bible talks about a centurion, a captain in the army. He came to Jesus and he said, my son is about to die. And Jesus said, all right, I will come to him. He said, uh-uh. I know I'm a Jew. And I said, I, I mean, a Roman soldier, sorry. And according to the custom of the Romans, when, when, when they call you, you must come physically present. And he said, but I am a man under authority. Jesus had him speaking kingdom language. And Jesus said, I'm interested. Talk, I'm listening. He said, as a result of being under authority, I can tell one, go without coming physically and he will go. And tell another, come and Jesus say, yeah, I have not found this revelation. You, a Roman soldier, who taught you this? He said, then go. If you believe this. Brothers and sisters, your degree of relinquishing the hold of your own principles and adopting that of the kingdom is the degree to which you will conform to the true image of the Christ here and now. That's why all things are not possible for everybody. I told you we are one in Christ. Revelation and alignment has separated us into different cadres. One star different from another in glory. So what is possible for brother A may not be possible for brother B. 
same grace, same faith, same Lord, same baptism. Different responses to that which the Spirit has given. That's why he gave unto one five talents. He gave unto one two. If he gave five and five, then we we'll know that it's a system that does not depend on our personal contribution. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Many people who teach that we all got the same thing. No, sir. The Bible tells me he gave five. He gave two. Not according to his desire to bless them. According to their stewardship that they have proven in time past. Hallelujah. So, a time comes when Taiwo's tradition and principles limit the Holy Spirit. God takes us so far. And when it's time to climb higher, that which she must lay down becomes too much. Can God use me? I'm a lady. All I want to do is just marry. That revelation is limiting God like the chains held the hands of Samson. Those two hands represented the ministry of the apostolic and the prophetic. They were bound. And so nothing could happen because the foundation of the kingdom is built upon the apostles and the prophets. Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. But the Bible says when the spirit of God came, the first thing that happened was the chains melted. They became like flax so that it could now release the apostolic and the prophetic. And he said, give me the jawbone of an ass. That's all I need. You have taken all the glory. You have taken all the praise. You have taken all dominion. You have taken all the praise. You have made them yours. The highest praise to the King. He has taken all the glory. He has taken all the praise. He has taken all dominion. He has taken all the praise. You have made them yours. Highest praise to the King. For a very long time, when he called this patriarch called Abraham, he said, Abraham, come out of your father's house. There is something in your father's house that has the capacity to limit your prophetic destiny. I know it's your father's house, but come out of it. He said, out of all your kindred and go to a land, a, a city, a mountain, a place that I will show you. And if you obey me, I will make you blessed. In Genesis 12, it was not yet at work in his life. It was the prophecy of what would happen if he obeys. And the Bible says he left. And Lot, you see that? He was told to go alone. When he looked at Lot, he said, Lot, I've been with you or you come. Amazing how we carry many things in the name of pity and they are the things that open the door for darkness at the apex of our breakthrough. Hallelujah. And Lot went with him. A time came, God said, told Abraham, look, let Lot go. What are you willing to let go? For the excellency of this new culture. Listen. The Bible says as for the ancient part. In the kingdom there is no invention. Your creativity is useless in the kingdom. You are not left to create anything at all. Are you getting what I'm saying? As far as working with God is concerned. Your expertise and your creativity is taking advantage of his spirit to enforce the kingdom here. But as far as your work with God is concerned, your personal initiative is not necessary. The Bible says, ask for the ancient path. It didn't say create a road and tie it. Ask for it. There is already a road. Ask for it and walk and you will find rest for your souls. In other words, refuse to ask for it and keep struggling following roads and come and find yourself in the same spot again is someone hearing what i'm saying so god desires that regardless see this sister can never relate with benga truly and sincerely if both of them do not adopt a higher kingdom that is greater than the, are you getting my point a time will come when their personal ideologies will clash 
why am I entering next week already? I don't want to steal into the mystery of marriage. And you will know why without the adoption of the culture of the kingdom, there's no such thing as family peace. Union between man and a woman. I love you, I love you. Junk. If you do not adopt this kingdom, you will. some people's head clash every day because their cultures are east and west. What they say don't do in this culture is exactly what you need to do to be a good citizen. When I talk of culture, I don't just mean tradition. I mean your way of life. Hallelujah. Are you getting my point now? When I submit to the culture of the kingdom, if this is my wife and I want to stand here and she wants to stand here, we both of us look and say, look, we are fighting here. Where does the king want? And the king said, two of you go back. We submit our personal wills to adopt that of the kingdom. This is the only basis where brothers can dwell together in unity. Are you getting my point now? Many of us are holding strong to devilish ideologies. Let me give you one. For instance, secular music and godly music. I'm hitting somebody now. Yes, I will say it again. Delete that junk from your phone. Don't let anybody let you know that Christians are... You know, we have these ugly mindsets about Christians that they are old school. They are the ones left behind. Just allow your foolishness to keep deceiving you. In the future, you will see how far we have gone. Hallelujah. A lot of people listen to all kinds of things. And we laugh and we are happy. Not knowing that music carries a spirit. Every song carries a spirit that rides upon your heart. Huh? When it writes upon your heart, it's like a spiritual slate. You begin to feed off that writing. That was the revelation that the devil was bringing to Jesus. Turn this stone into bread. There was something that was written on stone when Moses was on the mountain. He said, turn it to become bread. In other words, let that be your basis of living. And he said, no, man shall not live by this. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are many things that are militating us. So when we talk about this transformation, this transformation, you must align yourself. Ah, I refuse to talk about marriage this night. Please, I want peace. It's, it's till next week. Come next week prepared. Somebody can be married for 50 years and be married wrongly walking with an ideology he can write a wrong book and i was i was sharing with pastor alpha and his wife this afternoon we're just having some time together someone can be married for 50 60 years that's why when you see an elder who loves god and fears god and has a great home listen to him because he has two advantages experience and the spirit of god there are many people writing all kinds of books about marriage their personal experience has become the template for them to initiate other people. So they say certain things are not possible based on the limitations they faced. Not knowing that if they only aligned some more to the kingdom, some things would have become possible. Hallelujah. See, I submit to the government of heaven. So Igbo, how far are you willing to go with God? As far as submitting yourself to pick up the ideologies of the king is concerned. I don't just mean your culture in terms of village. The way you are behaving. It's generally believed that Igbo people like money and they can do everything for it. Don't laugh. That's a culture. When you come to the kingdom, what says the spirit to the church? What is the new ideology? Are you going to join that band of fruitless hustlers? I must make it. My share of the national cake. Although you are a Christian, you are born again, but it's limiting you. So you cannot honor the law of process. You cannot walk with the spirit accordingly. Hallelujah. Kogi people. Middle belters, all right, or northerners. There are strong ideologies that we have held as a territory. Are we willing to let some of these things go? 
when you are angry and you tell somebody you will see you now run and there's somebody's station to deal with you and bring everything to justice but the bible says vengeance is mine so you now have two kingdoms choose ye this day i set before you hallelujah it's believed that Yoruba people love education so much and they can press for it. You need to have a degree, do this, go abroad, come back, do this and that. But to what degree are you willing to yield to the spirit so that you become a true spiritual man, not limited by intellect alone? Knowing that the race is not to the swift and the battle is not to the strong. It is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but the Lord that showeth mercy. Said it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late at night, only to eat the bread of sorrow. But he gives unto his beloved sleep. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Who is this one? Um, the northern and Hausa man. What are you willing to lay down? generally believe that northerners are, are not serious with their wives. They are less as fair and careless. The man's job is just to give birth and then allow the woman go to farm and suffer and do that. Don't, just forget. We're going to talk about that next week. Praise God. See, ah, you see, the thing about marriage is that marriage is the greatest example between our relationship and Christ and this enforcing the kingdom. That's why I keep jumping there. If Benga, uh -uh, come, my brother. If this guy is going to marry um, Taiwo, brothers and sisters, except another kingdom superimposes them, there is war. Everybody shout war. war. War that will not end. You know that Anglican statement, war without end. Because there will be clash of values. Many of us go to God in prayer and we approach God with certain mindsets that are limiting God. And the Bible says they limited him in the wilderness by saying, can God. When you share a word like in the name of Jesus, the hand of God will come upon your exams. Your mindset suddenly says forget. If you read, you read. If you don't read, you will fail. Your mindset has become a limiting factor. You had the testimony of the, of the person who just checked the jam. I know many of you think it's a lie. If you are giving your way now, you say, let's verify this thing. Even that genotype thing, I'm not very sure. This is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. Praise the Lord. That's what you are saying. Say, forget Jare. Which doctor? Let's check. Let's go back. I must be there. Thomas was there. And he did the same thing. Are you getting what I'm saying? You see that all the disciples that Jesus walked with represented different ideologies. Peter was so impulsive. He was an extrovert. One moment, don't wash my feet. The other moment, bath me. Thomas, you know, all kinds of people. But all of them came into an alignment. Are you getting my point? Such that it didn't matter who entered any city. The Holy Ghost was comfortable to do the same thing. This is kingdom. Thy kingdom come. Say it upon your life. The kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. When the kingdom comes upon your finances, you stop running finances like heat and run. This nonsense people do around. You go to Abuja and see people running. Everybody is running. I, I was watching, I think it was NTA this afternoon and they were showing... A good luck, Jonathan. I think they went for something campaign in Equity State. Or this, and I saw all the people dancing on the road. I said, but do these people really love this country? Or is it that the hunger is too much? They are muzzling the last ounce of energy to just dance it. So that when the money comes, they can negotiate after the, the, the conference. Has the kingdom come over your finances? Or you are still running it the way you know? Go to school, get a job, hope to get a very great job. Wonderful. But have you, have you had the opinion of the king? Do you know there is an economic system in this kingdom that was there before you were born? 
have you been interested in subscribing to it the bible said taste and see that the lord it didn't say wish and complain be serious how do you taste food you go and sit down in the restaurant you sit down for as long as the food is being prepared while he's preparing the table before you in the presence of your enemies you must sit down and then you will taste and testify and say that which we have seen that which we have heard that which our hands have handled even that of the word of life that's what we preach has the kingdom come upon your soul to change your character brothers and sisters this is very important there are many christians without character you can walk out immediately after the grace and give one sister a dirty slap because you are entering bus you see forget the fact that i sat down in front of you try me i wound you i'm not one of these guys that like looking for women don't think i like you look at this this guy just spent three hours rolling on the floor and worshiping now he wants to give a lady a slap the next time somebody does like that tell him thy kingdom hallelujah when somebody carries his mouth and you are lambasting somebody a brother just comes and says i like your shoe no 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 no. i'm not this kind of people let me tell you something i'm not this kind of boy just say brother just say thy kingdom you need the influence of the kingdom have you allowed the kingdom to come upon your academics do you not know that the spirit of god came upon a man called daniel and changed him literally he learned the art and the language of the babylonians and the bible says he was distinguished but every time they are talking say me i had one p four c i added neko it even allowed me and gave me two years to make it up and you take that mindset have you allowed the kingdom to come please is my message making sense tonight in your body you will keep dying of terminal disease until you allow the kingdom to come so you are healed one moment from miracle service but you now go back and this happens again no come oh come me manuel and ransom captive is Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to thee, O Israel. God is coming to you tonight and saying how long are you willing to keep remaining at this level you have a ministry God wants to take you to a high level but your limitation there is a message you had that has refused to allow the kingdom come and you keep wondering why is this thing not working and then out of frustration you just say anybody that is doing it is fake forget it all these people Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. When it comes to you, he walks upon your mind. When it comes to you, he changes your ideology. Don't tell me I'm from Edo State. Don't tell me I'm from Plateau State. Don't tell me I'm from Lagos. Are you willing to subscribe to the governing influence of the king? Three ways you enforce the kingdom. Very quickly, please sit down. Number one. Look at me. 12. To enforce the kingdom, you must understand the mysteries of the kingdom. The principles that govern the operation of God's system. 
But it so happens that these mysteries are so many, our lifetime will not be able to... Follow me, please. I'm trying to construct the first, um, the first way of enforcing the kingdom. The mysteries that govern the operation of the kingdom. Remember, I showed you the creation before Genesis 1. Remember when we're talking about what? Laws of dominion or something. I told you there was a creation before Genesis 1. Is that true? And I showed you, isn't it? How that the foundations of the earth was created. That creation story was even more comprehensive than Genesis 1. That was when the foundations of the earth was laid upon pillars. Right? And I told you the sons of God is not a New Testament concept. It has been there. When the sons of God sang for joy. Are you getting my point now? So there are mysteries. The earth is not round. It's not suspended in the space. That's what science told us. But the Bible says it has pillars. The pillars extend to the sea. The Bible says God put doors at the borders of every river. That means every time we see flooding, a spirit manipulated a spiritual law because there are doors. Emmanuel. See, this is what you know that you won't be deceived. When people just say, water just came and washed the house, you say, uh-uh, come on now. I read in my Bible, there are doors. He put boundaries. But by the manipulation of spiritual laws, you can extend their boundaries. I told you, a man can be accurate but not be of God. Spiritual laws are ne not necessarily heavenly laws. In the kingdom, laws can be initiated by any spirit, any demon spirit, human spirit that's why a herbalist can concoct something for you and it will work because he's manipulating the laws of the spirit but for kingdom citizens that law must be initiated sustained by the spirit of the christ that's what makes it of god are you getting what i'm saying you can go to somebody by the riverside right now the person will buff out all your problems and truly you find out that your problems left because he manipulated a law but it so happens that if the spirit of god is not the one who initiated the process there will still be a window left only the spirit of god knows the mystery to the final door of evil every other person will leave a signature that shows so you can look at somebody's visitation of a man of god or of somebody and know that it's not god this person met there was still a window are you are you getting what i'm saying tonight Oh, I wish I had time. This gives you spiritual intelligence. I remember um, where I did my secondary school, they, had, they, they understood the art and science of holy rain. It would never rain on their market day. That was the source of their livelihood. They had enchanters who could look and know which law can keep the cloud suspended and then in the night around two no wind no nothing a heavy rain will now come what's the compensation there is something of course remember the law of exchange there is always a compensation don't let anybody fool you you don't get nothing for nothing in the kingdom that thing is not true if you got it free somebody paid for it there is always an exchange always So the next time you hear that there is flooding around, don't join ignorant people to just say, wow, the climate is changing. No. No. These spirits are invoking a spiritual formula that extends the borders of the rivers. But when the kingdom citizens show up, like Joshua, we have mastered the mysteries of the kingdom and we can look at the rod of Pharaoh and drop the rod of God and it will swallow it right in their presence and not increase weight and we tell the sorcerers explain the mystery of swallowing two snakes and not increasing in size where did they go to you answer mysteries with mystery see let me tell you in the days that will come it will be a clash of mantles men will talk very little something else will be speaking that which God trained them with is what they will use That's what can make people hire you and keep you in a walk. They just say you are, 
you are part of the board of advisors. You are not doing anything. Your presence is forcing mysteries to work in the favor of that company. And they say, oh God, you are part of the board of directors. For what? Oh, they will need us. Goodness, we are a city set on a hill. Trust me. Trust me. Bishop used to work with a man. I won't mention his name because people are listening. Bishop Stan used to work with a man. As graduates, he paid them 50000 but he paid the men of God that came to work with him 1.2. You know why? Because they have mastered the art and science of manipulating spiritual laws. Sorcerers and diviners in Bible days were not elected. They were the closest people to the king because if they leave him, you would die. They leave all the farmers and intelligent people to be killing themselves outside. And those who understand the art and science of controlling this realm. Hmm. And Job said, has thou commanded thy mourning? How do you command your mourning? Brothers and sisters, when you know what you can know, it will... Aye. Grant us grace. This is what the patriarchs knew that made them sons of God. Twelve men in the Old Testament. It has always been twelve. It's the system of God's government. Twelve men who manifested bodily the summation of mysteries that made them afraid. And Elijah the Tishbite showed up from wherever nobody knows. And how he got to the mountain, the Bible doesn't tell us. You think that man will just keep climbing the mountain like that? We just know he sat down at the top of the mountain. And the armies came with their spears. He said, really? They've trained you in the art of war. Those guys were so excellent. They could, they could, diverge, they could diverge arrows with slings. They were so accurate. But Elijah said, I don't have time for this business. Let fire come from heaven the disciples saw jesus do a lot of mystery that's why one day they said jesus let's come out fire jesus didn't say you cannot do it he said do you not know what spirit you are of in other words i'm showing you other mysteries you see what jesus kept teaching them he didn't finish the lecture that's why after resurrection he kept them for 50 days 40 days and he was teaching them the matters of the kingdom after that he said goodbye i can leave you now goodness and we, one man called Bad Jesus meandered. Have you heard the story? Bad what? Bad Jesus. Paul said, ah! In Acts chapter 16, I think it was 16 or 19, when they saw a lady with the spirit of divination bringing a lot of money to all their people by giving people word of knowledge. So you see that it worked, right? For whatever reason, a spirit entered that lady and trained her in the art of interpreting spiritual things. When Paul looked, Paul could not see, but he used another mystery that opened his eyes. And he said, uh-uh, this is not of God. May God make strong men out of us. Not just by impartation, but by knowledge. You will walk everywhere and read the handwritings on the wall. That what men are not seeing, you will see. You will enter your house and somebody will say, I have stomach ache. And you say, no, I need to fast. This is not about stomach ache. I have connected the dots. This is the dart of evil. And you come out after 24 hours and say it's well. Ah, uh ah. -uh. Somebody just says, I have another stomach ache. You say it's well. I know what I saw. Three days later, the family opens up to unspeakable breakthrough. You think they want you to come back home? There are some of you, they don't want you to come back home because you are, you are adding to the, the mysteries. You are not solving it. Why is it that when you come back home, things finish unusually? Whereas the prophet showed up and said, surely the, the oil will not finish. This and that will not finish. We're going to pray shortly. Dominion is not an impartation. Dominion is on the strength of the mysteries of the kingdom that you understand. He said it has been given unto you to know. See, when Adam was created, some things were told Adam that Eve did not know. That's why God held Adam responsible. Before Eve showed up, some informations were given Adam. For instance, part of the things that were taught, I believe with all my heart, was God gave him a story of the creation. God told him a lot of things. He knew that water 
was responsible for abundance. I hope you know. We've shared it here, right? That the things that came out, they came out from the water. The Bible tells us the birds of the air, the fish, they all came out from the water. This is another mystery. That's why the Bible says there are three that bear witness in heaven. The spirit, the word, and what? No, it can't be water in heaven. But it said in the earth realm, there are three that bear witness. So the spirit bears witness both in heaven and in the earth. The common factor, both in heaven and in the earth. The spirit, the water, and the blood. And I told you this represents three dispensations of the manifestation of the church, right? The, the dispensation of the spirit was a charismatic age from their Susa street and all of that. So people laid emphasis on the manifestation and the workings of the spirit. And then the word of faith started coming. That's the dimension of the water. They started teaching people accurately the things of the word. And before Christ comes the manifestation of the blood. Not as a teaching, as a lifestyle. Because the blood represents the very life of God. That's what will open the gates. So gates that were shut will be opened because of certain mysteries. Brothers and sisters, the kingdom of God seeks to find expression in your life. But because there are so many mysteries for us to learn, we can only touch so much. Listen to me. There are so many. It will take us a lifetime. So the Holy Spirit identified it as a predicament in us. And he said, there is another mystery that will help you connect to principles that you do not know, but they will work for you. And then the Bible starts saying, for we know not how to pray. He said, this is the limitation. Are you hearing me now? Follow me, please. He said, no man knows the heart of a man save the spirit of that man. So no man knows the heart of God save the spirit of God. And then he begins to communicate a limitation that every believer, no matter how strong, we have that limitation. What's the limitation? We know not what to pray for as we ought to. That means we don't know how to use the correct spiritual laws to the accuracy that will give us all the results that we need. But there was a technology that was kept to help our inadequacy. He said, but the spirit itself make it what? This is a mystery. Make it intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. Aha. Uh -huh. So when you begin to pray, this mystery was not taught Satan. This is what confuses demons. I hope you know Satan, Lucifer. I told us already, Lucifer was what? Light bearer. He was the custodian of the revelations. He thought he saw everything about God. He did not know that there were other mysteries that were hidden. So he deceived the one third of the angels. He said, guys, just follow me. I can tell you, I have every knowledge of God in my hands. I can even be God right now and it will not change the system of heaven. And God said, really, there was war in heaven. God didn't even stand up from his throne. It was Michael. Michael fought him. So when he came down, he came down, he became lower than the cherubs and all of that. Then, that's why he looked for Adam. I told you the first person who was in the Garden of Eden was who? Lucifer, not Adam. Lucifer was the first person in the Garden of Eden. He was driven out. That's why when Adam came, it got him angry. You see what Satan has with men. So when he collected the Adamic authority, at that point, he became greater than all the angels. Second to only the Trinity. That was why when Archangel Michael came and they were fighting over the body of Moses. Are you, are you seeing it now? Because at that point he was higher than him. He could not use that strength again. So he invoked a higher power. The Lord rebuke you. Hold on. Are you, are you getting my point now? Mm. When Jesus was born. Because Satan was working with Adamic authority. Even Jesus ran away for his life. Otherwise Satan would have killed him. When Satan took Jesus to the mountain, Jesus did not say, Satan, go away. No, he followed him. And Satan said, all these glories. What mountain did they climb that they saw the glories of the world all at once? Is that not a mystery? Where do you stand in the earth that you see all the glories? But he showed him at once. He said, it has been given to me. Ah, yeah. 
And so he said, let me give you the shortcut. Why go and die and do all of this nonsense? Because he knew that there is coming another law. He had seen water. It was the water that parted the Red Sea and brought separation between Egypt and Israel. It was the adumbration of baptism. But he saw an adumbration of the blood of the lamb in Egypt. And because he knows that prophetic things must have a physical explanation, he started following anything that looks like blood. So he said, Jesus, this one that you have come now, why well, just bow down to me and collect this thing? Jesus said, no problem. I will collect it anyway. So when he met with it in hell, he said, I've come to collect it now. See, see, Jesus defeated Satan without the help of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit had left him. He was in hell. Are you getting me? That was why after the third day, the same spirit that raised him back. That means he came back on the third day, raised by the spirit of God. And when Satan, Jesus collected the keys, stripped Satan of it. That's why in Revelation he said, I am he that was dead, but now I am alive and I hold the keys. He's got it back. That's what he gave us in redemption. Seven blessings. What is the lamb who was slain to receive? He has received unto us blessings, riches, those seven things. He gave it to us. He said, as my father has sent me, I send you with it. But he said, hold on. Don't just run foolishly. The Holy Ghost. There are many things I want to tell you, but you cannot bear them now. They will be needed for you to be effective. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come? He will guide you. He will teach you the other part of the lessons. Thy kingdom come. So when you begin to pray, that's the first way of enforcing the kingdom. As I begin to pray in the spirit, there are all kinds of codes and mysteries being manipulated in the spirit for my favor. So you can pray. Listen, I shared a revelation with Pastor Alpha and his wife this afternoon. When you pray, I hope you know you are sowing seeds. Is that true? And the Bible says, to every seed, God can change the body and give it another body. So I can be praying and all of a sudden it will manifest in my finances. God has given it another body. I can pray in tongues and it will manifest in my health. Are you getting me? God can give seeds another body. Are you seeing why it's important to pray in the spirit? For we have a limitation. We know not what we should pray for. Brothers and sisters, hear me here. If you are not baptized with the Holy Ghost with evidence of praying in fluent tongues, fluent tongues, you need to have a meeting with the prayer band people. Hallelujah. Fluent tongues is your lifeline out of this nonsense, this assault of the devil. They will manipulate your life with spiritual principles. I know a lot of people have thought that everything is okay once you are born again. Wait on. See, the laws of the spirit are not the laws of the Old Testament. They predate creation. Hallelujah. It was that same law that brought water for Hagar in the desert. She looked around and there was no water. And when the angel appeared, he opened her eyes. And there was water flowing. That means what you do not see does not mean it's not there. Something can happen in the spirit and make it manifest. There was water. She could not drink because she could not see it. What did the angel do to her eyes? The same thing Elisha did to his servant. Hallelujah. Prayer. Number two. You enforce the kingdom. You enforce the kingdom in the place of deep worship. Very few people understand worship. Please, if you are here and you've not cultivated the life of worship, you can meet the worship team members after the service and say, how do I cultivate a life of worship? Not an event of, cult of worship that you hold, Mike. A life of worship. Just like we did. That's why when we came, the Holy Ghost allowed us to bask in that presence. When that thing happens, the presence of God can enforce the reality of the kingdom. Hallelujah. 
One more. You enforce the kingdom by the ministry of the word. Both studying it and speaking it. Not just blind religious speaking. I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. That kind of speaking that doesn't carry any weight. But that you say, I am blessed. Out of a depth of conviction, you enforce the kingdom. Son of man, what seest thou? Ezekiel 37. Oh, Ezekiel 37. Son of man, can these bones live again? He said, only thou knowest. He said, enforce it. I prophesied as I was commanded. And the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord do what? Wish so. That means let the healed of the Lord say what? Let the prosperous of the Lord do what? So you say so. Comes from the word homologio. Repeat after the person you just had. And so you speak. My life is blessed. I'm a man of character. I'm a woman of character. You are enforcing the kingdom. I have no business with sickness. Hallelujah. My path is as a shining light. Even when you see things that contradict your faith, you know that there is a reality higher than what you have seen. And you enforce it with your words. We are going to pray. I have to stop here. Were you blessed tonight? Did you get something? We are going to pray. In a few minutes we are going to pray. We will just take two or three minutes and pray very generously in tongues. Hallelujah. After that we will make decrees. And then we will round up the service. Please rise up on your feet everyone. Please hold hands together everyone if you can and begin to pray in tongues. Activate the operation of mysteries. Pray brothers and sisters. Now you understand that praying in tongues helps you to enforce the kingdom, the culture, the influence. Change your life into the garden of Eden. Change your wilderness into the garden of Eden. It is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Change your destiny. Change your life. Give the Holy Ghost an opportunity to move your life forward. Repoto pres ke bondo sekete ekete nekete rekoto pros ke baba baba baba. Hallelujah. Whenever you feel confused in your life, pray in tongues. Your situation is at the mercy of mysteries being activated. There is what can be activated that suddenly makes everything possible. Gravity works, but there is another law called the law of aerodynamics. There is a principle that can compel gravity to give way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, please leave yourselves. The Bible says, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. In the next two minutes, I want you to open your mouth, prophesy over your life and your destiny. Come on now, speak the word of God.
and the blessed of the Lord. My body aligns to spiritual things. My mind aligns to spiritual things. In the name of the Lord Jesus, my eyes are open to see and understand the mysteries of the Spirit. Grace and peace is multiplied unto me by knowledge. Grace and peace. Prophesy koinonia. Grace and peace. Grace and peace is multiplied. Don't keep quiet. Don't keep quiet. When you keep quiet, you stop the kingdom from being enforced in your life. I am blessed. I'm fruitful all the way in the name of the Lord Jesus. The lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. The favor of the Lord compasses me as with a shield. The earth yields its increase for me. I'm blessed with the oil of gladness above my fellow. My eyes are open. Open your mouth and pray. If your neighbor is not praying, tell the person, speak. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. I'm rising higher and higher by the power of the Holy Ghost. Higher and higher. I break limits. I'm prosperous. I'm anointed in ever increasing dimensions. The hand of God is upon me. The favor of God is upon me. I belong to a kingdom of power. My words carry power. I am a blessing everywhere I go. The hand of God is upon me. The favor of God is upon my life. I'm strengthening my inner man. I'm a man of power. I'm a man of wisdom. The wisdom of the spirit is at work in me. I hear the voice of the spirit telling me this is the way. Walk ye in it. And I find rest for my soul. In the name of Jesus Christ, every mountain becomes a plain ground before me. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord makes a way for me where there seems to be no way. Where men say there is a casting down, my testimony is that there is a lifting up. There's no sickness in my body because I dwell in Zion and no inhabitant of Zion shall say I am sick. The spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in my mortal body and it quickens my mortal body. My mind is renewed. My body is mortified. Never an instrument of unrighteousness. It has been given unto me to know the mysteries of the kingdom. I understand the mysteries of dominion. I have ears that hear. I have eyes that see. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Two prayer points and we'll round up. Hallelujah. Number one, you're going to say, Lord, everything in my life that contends with the culture of the kingdom, tonight, let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come. Every mindset keeping me in poverty, every mindset making me a failure, every mindset destroying the anointing in my life, tonight, thy kingdom come. Pray. Your kingdom come upon my mind. Your kingdom come upon my finances. Your kingdom come upon my ideologies. I lay down mindsets. African mindsets. Cultural mindsets. Diabolic mindsets. Anti-craft Antichrist mindsets mindsets that fight 
the workings of the spirit mindsets that fight new levels of the anointing lay it down tonight and pray there is a higher realm in the spirit there is a level of excellence there is a level of quintessence there is a level of perfection pray mindsets we got from churches and denominations mindsets we got from our upbringing mindsets we got from our territories and traditions lord every mindset that is a stronghold limiting the operation of the spirit in my life tonight i cast down imaginations and every yatar every imagination and high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of christ hallelujah the foundation for true miracles is that everything must be consistent with the promises of God with the instructions of God and with the principles of God that's where the word of God comes into play I've taught us here that the word of God contains the word of God gives us three things basically promises instructions hallelujah and principles the promises that God has put in his word and so we find in his word that by his stripes we are healed we find in his word that um, it's his desire to prosper us spirit soul and body we find in his word that we have authority over snakes and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy so the word of God gives us information the word of God gives us the knowledge that we need to operate in the miraculous so you see the miraculous is not a, a haphazard manipulation of spiritual laws are you listening to me the miraculous is an orderly execution of God's patterns and his principles that when the principles of God's word are followed to the latter you cannot but experience the mighty working power of his spirit and so the word of God has its place it becomes the foundation of everything that we do hallelujah so that all of the operation of the miraculous is within the boundaries of the word and the character of the spirit that way we will be able to run away from the operation of familiar spirits because familiar spirits will operate in a way that may look like God but because of the foundation of God's word we will be able to decipher and then understand that these are not operations that are consistent with the character of the kingdom hallelujah and so the word of god is the foundation for the miraculous you want to walk in the miraculous or you want to begin to release miracles you must be an ardent student of the word not just cramming verses but to have an understanding of the patterns of the kingdom hallelujah for every time the house is built according to pattern, the glory of God will show up. His glory shows up as a proof that it has been built according to pattern. And so the word of God gives us God's pattern, his principle of operation. The word of God gives us knowledge and it gives us understanding. The Bible says the entrance of thy word giveth light and understanding to the simple. Hallelujah. No matter how full of the Holy Ghost you are, no matter how um, charismatic and apostolic you are, the word of God must become the foundation of the miraculous. Say after me, the word of God is the foundation of the miraculous. So where then does the Holy Spirit come in? Where does the name of Jesus come in? Because it looks like the word of God is all of it. Hallelujah. The job of the word is to inform us. The word of God informs us. It gives us the orientation. It aligns our mindsets to God's principles. And it prepares our hearts. The word of God prepares the platform for obedience. Because without a word, you cannot obey. Are you listening to me? 
if I ask you to come, you are coming because you receive the word. Is that correct? Every time there is no word, there is no platform for obedience. And when there is no obedience, there is no manifestation. Hallelujah. So the word of God gives us an opportunity to obey God. So when God begins to send his word your direction, then you realize that it's time for you to begin to celebrate miracles. Because his word prepares your heart. The word of God will always demand obedience. Always. The word of God does not just produce automatic results. It will demand obedience on your own part. Hallelujah. There are so many people who love God's word. But are not willing to take steps of obedience. And until you take steps of obedience. You will not truly experience the miracle working power of God. Say amen. Hallelujah. Number two, the name. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5. Let's turn there very quickly. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to get this simple revelation to prepare the platform for the awesome things that Jesus will be doing in this place. Verse 5. Let this mind, the word let there is permit. Permit this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. The literal translation there says, thought it not a thing to be grasped or a thing to be held unto. It says, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient. There you see obedience again unto death and even the death of the cross verse 9 wherefore god had so highly exalted him and given him a name that is above not equal to not equal with above every other name so there are names but there is a name that is above them all every sickness is a name every disease is a name every oppression is a name but the Bible says there is a name that has been highly elevated above them. And the Bible says at the mention of that name, the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven, of things in the earth, and of things under the earth. And it says, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, the master, the owner, to the glory of God the Father. So there is power in the name of Jesus. Hear me. The name of Jesus is, the power is not in the pronunciation. Are you listening to me? The kingdom of God is such that when Jesus rose again, all authority was vested in his person. Are you listening to me? So when we talk about the name, we are not just talking about J-E-S-U-S. We are talking about standing in his office, in his authority. Hallelujah. The power of the name is where we get the word exousia. The power of attorney. The capacity to function in the office of another. Hallelujah. So the word of God must be declared in the name of Jesus. That means it must be declared with the consciousness that we are standing in the office of Christ as ambassadors here on earth. For every time you declare God's word. And it's outside of the name. It's important. The realm of the spirit only answers to the name. So every time you speak. When you speak in the name. It becomes the same thing as God speaking. The owner of that name takes responsibility for what you are saying. Are you listening to me? If you stand and declare. And say be free. Because you are Joshua Selman. There's, there's no reason why the realm of the spirit should obey you but if you say in the name i stand as touching the authority and the office of the king and on that basis i make decree god the owner of that name and the owner of the authority makes it a point of reference to back his word according to jeremiah 1 verse 12 are you understanding how they function so it's not enough to speak the word the word must be spoken in the name standing in his office 
realizing that I'm not speaking as me. I'm standing representing the parliament of heaven. I have been given an authorization by the king himself. His Holy Spirit in me being proof that I have been authorized. And when I speak to demons and situations, I tell them in the name of Jesus, be lifted. What they see in the realm of the spirit is not me. The owner of the name shows up and says, you heard my word. It's not the word of the servant of God. It's God's word through the lips of faith. There are too many believers making confessions, making decrees, but they are not making decrees in the name. Hallelujah. Be healed, be delivered, be set free. I command your life to change and nothing happens in the realm of the spirit because the realm of the spirit is an orderly realm. There is only one name that has been exalted. It's an office. Hallelujah. It's an office. If good Lord Jonathan calls me today and decides to confer the title of a general in the army, whether or not I have the experience of a general, the moment I put on that uniform, standing in that office, I can make decrees and every other rank has to submit. Is that correct? When you realize that you have the highest name, every in the realm of the spirit, submission is according to strata and authority. And so when you tell Satan bow, he will say, by, by what authority? What's your position in the realm of the spirit that warrants this kind of order? And then he said, let me tell you, I am seated. Seated with Christ in heavenly places, far above your name and your situation. My name may be Joshua Selman, but in the realm of the spirit, the voice you hear is the voice of Christos, the anointed. Because I'm not speaking of myself. I am speaking as touching his authority. So when we say Satan, enough is enough over this person's life. Yahweh, the owner of that name, steps in. According to Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12. Amplified says, he is alert and active. Watching over his word, not your word. His word, he only performs his word. Many of us have been speaking our word. That's why there's no performance. So you heal in the name. Declaring the word in his name. So the word of God without the name of Jesus is important. No matter what version you quote it from. Hallelujah. You tell a demon rise up i mean stand up be on your feet and go out it will not go just because you spoke grammar the sons of skiva thought it was just about declaring the word and they gathered the man who was possessed with demons and said we adore you hallelujah they made that declaration but in the realm of the spirit they were speaking of themselves and as a result the demon proved to them that he was not blind enough to see the structure in the realm of the spirit and that's going to be the basis you see why we are confident of the things that God will be doing because we are standing in the name hmm. we are singing in the name we are praying in the name we are releasing people from bondage in the name so we declare the word in the name John chapter 14 very quickly Thank you for the blessed office that that name carries. Brings us to a position where we do not just speak empty words. Jesus himself said this in verse 12, John 14 verse 12. And whatever ye ask in my name, that will I do. Whatever ye what ask in my name, as touching my authority whatever you ask 
in my name. That's verse 13. That I will do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. 14. It says, if ye ask anything in my name. In my name. As touching my office. As touching my authority. I will do. The Bible says that all authority had been conferred upon him. And he gave us that authority. The ability to stand in his stead and to make decrees in the earth realm. And he assures us that it will be established. So the word of God is God's instrument of operation. But the word is not potent in itself until it is spoken from the standpoint of the name. Hallelujah. Let's quickly talk about the spirit. How does the anointing of the Holy Ghost come into play? How does the ministry of the Holy Spirit come into play? Hallelujah. Luke chapter 4. Blessed Father, thank you. See, every time I begin to talk about the Holy Ghost, I sense His presence. Verse 16. And He came to Nazareth, where He had been brought up. And as His custom was, He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. 17. And there was delivered unto Him the book of the prophet Isaiah and when he had opened the book he found there the place where it was written the spirit of the Lord is upon me the spirit of the Lord has overwhelmed me and he that spirit has anointed me and as a result of that anointing I will do the following to heal the sick to bind the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance Hallelujah. So every time the word is spoken as touching the office of Christ, the anointing of the Spirit responds. The anointing of the Spirit moves in the direction of that word. That means when you say be healed, it's the anointing for healing that will move. When you say be healed, the anointing for prosperity will not move because the anointing responds to the word that was spoken. He said, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, Acts chapter 10, verse 38, with the Holy Ghost and with power, he went about doing good. How did he do the good? By speaking. But the Bible says it was the anointing that was responsible. So every time he spoke, as touching the authority of his father, the anointing was released in the direction of whatever he was saying. This is the secret of the miraculous. The harmonious working of the word of God, the authority of his name, and the anointing of the spirit. Hallelujah. Every time you speak the word, you release the manifestation of the spirit. Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 2. The Bible says that and the spirit entered me when he spake unto me. The spirit entered in response to the word and the spirit entered me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet the spirit entered me john chapter 6 verse 63 it says it is the spirit that gives life the flesh profited nothing the words that i speak unto you they are spirit although i'm speaking the agency of operation in the realm of the spirit is the manifestation of the holy ghost so when you say be healed it's not just the word B-E-H-E-A-L-E-D that makes it happen. That you are saying be healed, standing in the office of Christ. The Holy Ghost who represents the continuation of the ministry of Jesus on earth responds with his power and his presence. The harmonious working of the word. Standing in the name of Jesus. And allowing the Holy Spirit to find expression. So when you see us 
just saying holy spirit thank you for your anointing we are not replacing the word we are saying by reason of your anointing we are sure that the moment we begin to speak how come is when we begin to speak that there is a rapid manifestation of his power because the anointing responds to the word they were never supposed to act in antagonism to one another you can't say i choose the word what are you choosing Oh, I choose authority. Me, it's just Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says there was darkness and chaos. The Holy Ghost was hovering around, ready to release the power. But nothing could happen because the word had not been spoken. And God said the word. Immediately, the Holy Spirit went into motion and there was light. That's the, the same way when we say be healed, the Holy Ghost is already in this place strong with his power we are gathered under the authority of jesus so you can be sure that he is in her midst when we begin to make decrees and rebuke satan the power of the holy spirit the operation of angels and all of the manifestations in the realm of the spirit begin to happen in response to our word brothers and sisters this is the dynamics of the operation of the miraculous And tonight we have the living word of God what does that word tell us that is God's desire for you to be sick is that what it says is that what the word says that is God's desire for you to be poor that is God's desire for you to be weak that is God's desire for you to be oppressed is that what it says Jeremiah 1 I mean um, 11 29 verse 11 it says, I know the thoughts I think towards you, said the Lord. My thoughts of good and not of evil. To bring you a future and an expected end. The Bible says, no inhabitant of Zion shall say, I am sick. Hallelujah. Said, upon Mount Zion there shall be healing and deliverance. And the people of God will possess their possession. So the word of God tells us the mind of God for tonight's meeting. The word of God tells us that God is in the business of healing. Are you listening to me? So that we can align with what God is doing. The word of God tells us that he's willing to heal and to deliver. It says I wish above all things that ye prosper and be in health. It's God's will and desire to bless us. It said I have given you authority over snakes and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy he said nothing shall by any means harm you so the word of god has told us already the mind of god concerning tonight's meeting there's no point asking god is it your will this cancer has been there so what the word of god tells us the mind of god it tells us god's opinion is it your will for me to be living from hand to mouth no sir the word of god gives us a revelation of god's perspective about your life the doctor said you have a terminal disease what does the word god say he said i said before you life and death i said before you blessing and cursing he said choose life that you may live so your life is not tied to any sickness there are many of us who believe that sickness comes from God it's a nice way of just helping us and training us so why are you looking for a miracle if you believe it comes from God because you will be opposing what God is doing then hallelujah many people say well i don't believe in miracles the day you need one you will believe in miracles hallelujah the day the doctors tell you i'm sorry on that day you will truly believe that he's a miracle worker how about oppression many of us have been under all kinds of bondages by satan but the Bible says, he that cometh from above is above all. Above all. All means all. All means all. Ephesians chapter 1 tells us that we are being raised together with Christ. Above thrones. Above dominions. And every name that is named. Both in this age and in the age to come. 
So the word of God gives us a revelation of God's opinion about tonight's meeting. And I bring you a message of hope and healing. I don't care what situation you came here with. I know that many of us came with um, requests and prayers. We have some that have been sent all over the nation. People sending in their honest requests. But don't just come and say, God, can you heal me? Can you, can you not? No, no, no. For he is able. Oh, God is able. He defeated Satan. It wasn't a combat. It was a flawless victory. Now that you know that he's able, is he willing? Oh, yes, he is. He's willing for it's consistent with his character of love. Every manifestation of love is giving in nature. And so he, because he loves us, he wills to heal us. We are standing as touching the name and the office of Jesus Christ. And tonight, I want you to know that he is here. I am not him. The mighty one himself is here. And as touching his authority, we are going to be releasing people into the glorious promises that God has for them. And I am happy that my senior friend and partner in ministry is in this place. The glorious Holy Spirit. The beautiful Spirit of God. The one who comes to turn every wilderness into a fruitful vine. And every fruitful vine into a forest. The one who brings beauty and glory. The one who supplies the anointing. Hear me. The Holy Spirit is the custodian of the anointing. It's impossible to have the anointing without him. The one who gives direction. Gives direction. The one who will grant us abilities. Shortly we are going to be operating in the gifts of the spirit. It's not our gift, it's his gift. Freely flowing. The one who sees the secrets of the hearts of men. It's called the Holy Ghost. The spirit of the living God. The one who will begin to touch you and shock you at the point of your need. We are confident of his great presence and the power of his voice. For he said in Isaiah 30, you will hear a voice from behind. And that great voice is here to speak and direct us to walk according to the word. The aim of this meeting is not just for you to receive miracles for yourself, but to be empowered so that you will be a dispenser of the miracle working power of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That's what the Lord is going to be doing. I am so happy. Now you know there's no magic. There's no abracadabra about the miraculous. No. The harmonious workings of the rhema of God. The spoken word. That word that is conveyed. Standing under the office of the Christ himself. The Holy Spirit bearing witness in signs and wonders. That's what gives us confidence. And I'm happy for his glorious presence. How many of you are ready for what he will be doing? How many of you have had faith rise up in your spirit? I don't care what the sickness is. I don't care what the oppression is. Whether you are standing in for your loved ones or not. I don't care what the situation is. Lack, poverty, death, everything that represents darkness will bow to the name of the Christ, the living God. Terminal diseases will die. All kinds of oppressions will give way. And many of you will live here with a fire in your spirit that with this spiritual understanding 
you will find yourself dispensing the miracles of God. Are you ready for what God is doing in this place? Oh, I'm excited in my spirit. My Father, thank you for the wonders, the operation of your spirit, the outburst of the miraculous in this place. We give you all the praise and we ask in the name of Jesus that everyone in this place comes under the authority of the Holy Spirit and under the influence of his anointing. That as the word is spoken, let it convey the miraculous power of the Holy Spirit into your life. Rise up on your feet. Go ahead and begin to pray. Come on, bless him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you for your spirit. Tell God now is the time for that tumor to disappear, for that blindness to go, that bone condition to go, that deafness to leave. Now is the time for the reign of Satan and evil to go once and for all. Once and for all. There's no contention between light and darkness. Come on, pray. The time is here. The word of God is strong in our midst. His authority is mighty upon us. And his anointing is strong to heal and to deliver. Come on, pray. Say, Lord, I came here for business tonight. God is already doing great and mighty things. Be thou and through on high and through on high and through. My God, just said. song one more time hear me one more time as you lift up your voice there are 11 people that the power of God will come mightily upon let's have those people 11 people the Lord shows me as you lift up I see fire just swirling in the atmosphere be thou and throw
The fire of God is falling hey, right now. So Kata on 11 people. Please let me have them outside here right now. It's happening. Inside and outside. Eleven people catching the fire inside, outside.
blue flames outside. Blue flames. Blue flames. Those of you outside, lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Blue flames. The power of God is coming upon some of you right now. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. There's one of you under a demonic influence right now. Those outside, the angel of the Lord. I see blue flames. There is a stirring. Satan, let that girl go now. Hold on. Leave her. Leave her. Out of her. Now. Out of her. Now. Come out of her. 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 That devil. Come out of her. Sataka Topo Kosia. Shapatani Bao Shakapata. Iparata Sakapatani Bao Shakatalabada Badai. Repo Sakapatani Bao Shakapata. No enchantment and no divination. Hallelujah. Hear me. The Lord is showing me families here. I really want us to be as fast as we can. Because the ministers are also going to minister. I see some of you here. I don't know what I'm. God is showing me a river, and I'm seeing a lady. Your parents go to that river and do something very diabolic and demonic, and it has been affecting you. Hallelujah! You are in the congregation. When I shout five, I make five counts. The power of God is going to come upon that person and you will be free. That's what God shows me. One, two, three, four, five. Total freedom, total freedom, total freedom. Total freedom for that person. Total freedom. Those devilish. Total freedom. Bring the lady. You are free, my dear. Free. Please bring her. I set you free now by the power of the Holy Ghost now you are free from that oppression oppression you cannot even explain not knowing where it's coming from be free now in the name of the Lord Jesus Bone conditions. Bone conditions. Bone conditions. Bone conditions. Kabaseka porasika. Any kind of bone condition. Be healed now in the name of Jesus. Every kind of bone condition. Be healed now 
in the name of Jesus. Hold on. Come. God is not done with you yet. For you don't know what you have been delivered from. Let me tell you something. God is setting a great deliverance for you. Just look at my eyes. Just look at my eyes. I want you to look at my eyes. Just look at my eyes. Just maintain your gaze and look at my eyes. Something is happening to you. You will be totally, totally free. Hmm. You know my voice. Let her go. Let her go. Let her go. In the name of Jesus, be free by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I see some ladies here having ovarian cyst. For two of you, it's at the initial stage. You've been feeling pains. You think it's appendicitis. The Holy Spirit tells me ovarian cyst. Hallelujah. Right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus, be free. Be healed. Be made whole. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ. Ovarian cyst. There's a woman. Okay, not one person. I think about two people. You brought the picture. The picture. You came here with a picture of your loved one or your daughter or something. Not a, please don't just come out carelessly. There are two people God is showing me. Who is that person? Who is that? You? Where's the picture? Lift it up. Come. Where's the second person? There's another person. Where's the picture? What is wrong with them? Because she's my ex-girlfriend. She's your ex-girlfriend? Yes, sir. Are you born again? Yes, sir. Very born again? Yes, sir. Jesus is Lord of your life. What is wrong with her? Nothing is wrong with her, sir. Nothing? Yes, sir. You just brought her a picture? Yes, sir. Is she here? No, sir. Hold on, hold on, my dear. God is doing a work in your family. Whose picture is this? My dad. Your dad? Yes, sir. What is wrong with him? Since when he went for his mother's burial, he came back from the village with illness. He came back with illness? Yes, sir. Let me see the picture. I'm sure more words will be coming. I'll give the minister some opportunity. I want us to finish very, very fast. Is this the only that's his picture too? My mom. This is your mom? Yes. Sir. What is wrong with her? Nothing. I just came with the picture. Okay. Your dad is sick right now. Yes, sir. Look at me. Look at me. Open your eyes. You believe you can stand in for him? Yes, sir. And receive? What's wrong with him? He's not just feeling fine. You are going to hold this picture. Okay, sir. As soon as you touch this picture, the power of God will run through you and hit your dad right where he is. I listen to me. Listen. That's what God is giving me. Just touch the picture. Just hold it. That's the instruction. God. As soon as, be careful. As soon as, you, it will be a strong anointing upon you. That's what I'm sensing. Hold the picture. Hold the picture. In the name of the Lord Jesus. The power of God touches your father right where he is. We command healing, instant healing, right now for him. Father, we pray that this lady will know the Lord and will walk in her ways. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead, John. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord asked me to speak these words. 
while I was praying to my closet, the Lord says, for I'm uncovering their plot. He said, and lead us. He said, lead us in this country. He said, certain leaders will be brought to the law as a result of assassinations and terrorism in this country. I was praying and God began to speak to me and asking me to pray about the independent celebration of tomorrow. God says for this hour, he said, I'm listening to the prayer of the president of this nation. He said, even as Nigeria enter into our 51 anniversary, our independence anniversary, God says, I'll cause the prayer of David in Psalm 51 to be answered in his life. God says, for as many that can stand on their watch as watchman tonight, he gave me the instruction to stand from 11.30 and pray into the 51st anniversary of this nation. He said, for as many watchmen that will stand and pray tonight into the celebration, he said, I'll avert evil tidings in this nation. The Bible says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. I will declare tonight that peace within our walls and prosperity in our palaces. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm seeing an infant baby, a little baby, fair. I don't know if there's anybody who brought a baby like that. God wants me to pray for that baby. I'm seeing a little fair baby, an infant baby. For I see the spirit of infirmity coming upon that baby. From outside, inside, you came with a little baby. I'm seeing that baby. God asked me to pray for that baby. Where's that baby? Ushers, please help us. I see a spirit of infirmity come upon a little fair baby. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise. We thank you because this baby's life shall be spared. We cause the spirit of infirmity tonight. We cause the spirit of infirmity tonight. We declare that this baby's life is preserved by the anointing of the spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus. For I hear the Lord says, I open the door for his father. I see certain limitations. I see certain hindrances and frustration that he has experienced. Even around the works of his hand. God says, I'm opening doors tonight. God says, I'm opening doors tonight. God says, I'm wiping your tears. For I give you a new song tonight, says the Spirit of the Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lord, we give you praise. My sister, look at me. God says, even that abdominal pain, excruciating pain that comes upon you even in this area, God says he's bringing deliverance. Lift up your hands. Look at me. Look at me. Lift up your hands. You, you. Lord, I pray for her right now. I command deliverance to come right now. In the name of Jesus. God says, I'm even causing doors of marriages that have been sure to be opened over your family. In the name of Jesus. God says, doors of marriages are opening tonight. God says, I break that limitation. I break it tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus. God says, your family will begin to celebrate because marriages are coming. Watch it and see the word of the Lord being fulfilled in your family. In the name of the Lord Jesus, that curse is averted. Lord, we give you praise. Please just lift up your hands. Let me pray for you. I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus that you leave this place whole. We declare that infirmity will not find its root in your body anymore. We declare that your back will not touch the hospital bed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm seeing somebody, like while you were born, some cuts, marks were given to you in your body and certain incantations were done. And this is what has been responsible for misfortune that you have been experiencing in your life. Certain circles of evil that has been coming to you. Where are you? Just stretch out your hand. He's a guy. Where are you? Just come. I want to pray for you right now. God says that yoke will be broken over your life. Where is that person? Please just... Lord, I pray that those marks, those marks of incantation that was put over your body that is responsible 
for the evil. I declare it broken right now. I declare freedom to you in the name of Jesus. I declare you delivered in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm hearing the Lord give me the name Charles. I declare over you in the name of Jesus that those marks of evil are broken. I declare freedom and liberty to you right now. In the name of Jesus, be free. Charles, I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Just lift up your hands where you are. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you are rolling away those limitations. I declare open door for him in the name of Jesus. The Lord says open door comes to you right now. God says that place that you have experienced frustration, God says is about to give you victory right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mrs. William, just lift your hands. God says I'm answering your prayer tonight. God says I'm bringing the desires of your hands, the desires of your heart into your hands. He said, from now henceforth, the intimacy that you have desired with my spirit, you will need to see it like never before. God says, stretch your hand. Just put your hand like this. I see the Lord says, you begin to see the anointing to heal come upon your life. As you minister to people, you begin to see the anointing to bring healing upon your life. I declare, take it right now. I declare the anointing to come into your hands. Let the fire of God burn into you right now. Burn, burn, burn in the name of Jesus. Bridget, lift up your hands. God says, I'm anointing your food tonight. He said, I bring acceleration to your food. In the name of Jesus, take it. Refine as fire, take it upon your life. In the name of Jesus. Among the people that Apostle was praying for, for bone condition, I see somebody, the injury that you have in your bone came as a result of an accident, a car accident. You had a car accident and you have injuries somewhere inside your body. Just lift up your hands. A car accident. A car accident that left you with an injury. A car accident that left you with an injury. Put your hands there right now. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I release your healing virtue. Be healed, be healed, be healed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Like on God says, it's a door of opportunity that I'm open for you in this season. God says within now in December, watch and see the opportunities that will come for you in your sound work will amaze you to be more than you have ever experienced in your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Anu, I want to pray. I heard the Lord says, I'm averting that conspiracy over your dad. I don't know what's happening around him right now. I don't know that which has been happening that is a concern to your family. But God says, I'm averting a conspiracy. God says, and I'm bringing a testimony and your family shall celebrate. I release that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Celebration come. The conspiracy is averted. I see that it all has to do with his work. Only look at me. I see that it has to do with his work. Certain people have teamed up against him in his place of work. Am I saying it? Yes, sir. Certain people have teamed up against him in his place of work to lift him down, to bring him down. But God says, I'm causing that spirit to be averted today. And God is bringing a testimony to your family. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Just... Just Hallelujah. before, sorry, one minute. Do we have any Stephen Daniels in this place? From the time I stood up here, I've been hearing Stephen Daniels. Stephen Daniels. That's your supervisor. Stephen Daniels. I've been hearing Stephen Daniels from the time I sat down. Stephen Daniels. I don't know who he is, but I hear the Lord said that he's bringing rapid increase and restoration for Stephen Daniels I don't know I don't know who Stephen Daniels is but I've seen that the man has been oppressed by people again and again God is showing me 
that he has been oppressed the lord is saying tell stephen daniels i'm bringing him rapid restoration and increase hallelujah can you come down please please when when the worship was on i was sitting there and the holy spirit began to speak to me about what is going to be doing in the to the church in the area of finance I saw the, the Lord open my eyes and I saw angels in charge of finance, in charge of uh, wealth and uh, prosperity being released in the church like never before. And I saw something like a, something like a, a, in the shape of a stone, like a diamond, being dispersed to the house. There's a lady, there's a black lady sitting, the black lady by the camera there, you there. You there, yeah. I saw something like a diamond being given to you during worship. And I know it has to do with prosperity to your family. To your family, I hear that. The Lord said it's going to be releasing a prosperity anointing upon the church like never before. And the Lord told me that one of the things is going to require from each and every one of us is obedience. So when you're talking about obedience, it confirmed what God told me. And I was asking the Lord, what about, uh, uh, what role does uh, faith, does the fear of the Lord, does holiness and everything does and the Lord told me that if we just obey him by obeying him we will live in holiness by obeying him we will walk in faith and by obeying him we fear him so the Lord said he's going to be releasing wealth to the church like never before and also Reverend Ima can you come to the front when Apostle asked uh, the usher to pick you to the the stage the Lord opened my eyes and I saw the Lord opening a door for you to travel out and the Lord said he has seen your faithfulness even you you and your wife have seen how you have managed a lot of little little resources the Lord said he has tested you he has seen your integrity he has seen your faithfulness he will reward you and also my brother during the worship when the choir was worshiping i saw an angel of the lord changing your clothes you i see i saw an angel of the lord changing your garment changing your garment i don't know what that means but i know the lord is going to do something in your family and also there's a there's a lady that has a, a challenge with the chest the chest uh, a problem with the chest it's a periodic problem that normally comes to the chest I see the Lord extending healing power upon you. Okay, it's, it's bronchitis. Okay. I see the Lord doing a healing upon you. And also there was a guy who prayed for uh, Apostle last time, a guy that was involved, is involved in this student uh, uh, politics. I don't know whether you are here. Well, a guy that was involved in student politics, that if the president of the present president of our session is who? Come out here, come out. I'll tell you what the Lord just come. In a vision, I saw, in the, when I was sitting there, I saw in the vision, I saw three men, three men with uh, white, I believe they are Malo people, outside guys. With, open your eyes and look at me. I saw three men with mustache setting the conspiracy against you in place of decision. As a decision that is going to come to you to take uh, this very semester, the first semester of uh, next session, are we in the session already? I said that's a decision that will, that will involve uh, uh, the student relationship with the school, I mean with the school authority. I saw three men with mustards try to set a conspiracy against you and the Lord said it's going to give you mouth and wisdom, it's going to give you grace and keep you in integrity. Please, can you stretch for your hands and pray for him? Father, we pray you keep him, Lord. Father, I pray you keep him, Lord. I say you keep him, Lord. We pray you keep him in eternity. Keep him in integrity. In Jesus' name. I'm still not Reverend anymore. I see a recommendation. Somebody is going to be recommending you somewhere. Somebody is going to be recommending you somewhere. And the Lord says he's going to grant you favor. In Jesus' name. You can you come? You the lady there, I saw something like a diamond be given to you. A dark lady there behind Jordan. God is going to be releasing unusual prosperity and anointing upon the church. I even saw little children. 
at the age of 9, 10, playing with diamonds. And the Lord referred me, and the Lord referred me to the book of Psalm, chapter 24, verse 1. The Bible says that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And the Lord said, if only we'll walk in obedience to him, if only we'll walk in obedience with him, if only we'll walk in obedience, if only we'll walk in obedience, we shall eat the good of the land. Father Lord, even concerning the family, even uh, the crisis that, that is happening in the family that was at a direct result of financial challenges, Lord, is answered in Jesus' name. We call forth wealth, unmeasurable wealth, to your family in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Sorry, who is Janet? Who is Janet? Do we have any Janet in this place? Come. Look at me. Where's your father? What does he do? He works with ABU. Yes, sir. For how long has he been due for promotion? Mm, he's retiring next year. He's retiring next year. Yes, sir. Do you know that the the position he's in now? He's supposed to be have been he's supposed to have been promoted um, long to another. Uh, what do I call it now? Another step, another promotion. But people have been conspiring against him, and I've been seeing. Uh, I'm, I'm seeing right now that something good was supposed to come to him last year and then there were people that stepped in. The Lord is saying I should tell you that she will use you to bring a miracle to your family. Amen. Now, don't, don't doubt how it's going to happen. Just believe what I'm telling you. Alright? The Lord is going to use you to bring a miracle to your family. I'm hearing Godia. Anybody with the name Godia, whether you or your loved one, I'm hearing Godia. Do we have anyone inside, outside Godia? God has a word for that lady. Who is the person? Ron, come. That's your name. That's your name, Godia. Is your name Godia? Well, I know you to be Sarah. I saw uh, an attack upon. Sorry. Hallelujah, uh, Godia. I saw like an attack upon you, and I, I, the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord upon me. I mean, they called Godia. I saw you in particular walking in cycle. And the Lord said he's going to bring deliverance to you. And it's the deliverance is going to be permanent. What the Lord said. Look at me. Let me surprise you. Look up. He's a tall young man. He will meet you in white. He will be wearing a blue tie. That's your husband. Yes, yes it's true. It's true, sir. It's true. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord. That's, that's, and that's, it's true. I pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus. That the Lord will bring a great restoration to your family. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Um, the Lord told me about some conditions, people with blood challenges, okay? You have blood challenges, different kinds of challenges in your blood, whether it's a sickle cell or something, in your, your blood system. Different terminal diseases in your blood. Please quickly come. The Lord began to tell me that change the seed, okay? Change the seed and change the tree. Hallelujah. So it's from the seed, from their blood system. We'll be trusting the Lord to do a thorough job in you to change it. Do you understand me? Hallelujah. 
And now the Lord began to show me a particular case. Um, especially a young man. You give yourself, you, you like watching horror films, especially vampire films. It's beginning to affect you terribly. I see it drawing you close to coffins. Okay? You quickly come out. Then I receive words of knowledge for people with um, pains on their joints. Just their ankles, specifically ankles. Ankles, you have pains on your ankles, quickly come out. Then I receive the word for there's somebody here who's like a block on your, your neck and your head just here. You feel such pain, strong pain, like a block. Quickly come out. The Lord began to tell me he's going to be releasing, releasing fire into our hearts, to the hearts of so many people. Mokta specifically, the Lord says he's going to be imparting fire into your heart, to your heart in this meeting. Hallelujah. We'll be praying for you. Please, let's just lay hands on them. Uh, you, madam, you come. I see the Lord giving you I see a job. As Please, as they lay hands on you, the power of God will come I upon see, just you. Just stay there. Don't come, don't come close. Stay far. I see the Lord giving you a walk, a very good walk. You've been asking him, you've been praying and asking him to do something. And he said that he has answered your cry and he's going to give you a walk before the year, year runs out. A good walk. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, um, when John first stood here and was giving a prophetic word for the nation, um, I didn't want to say it, but God asked me to say it. Last, last year, I had a vision, a real vision. I was there and I saw the coffin of a prominent presidential figure. I saw that he died and they were taking him and the Lord says it's happening soon. This country is going to lose a prominent presidential figure on account of their wickedness and things against God. God will bring judgment. Write it. It will happen. Hallelujah. God will bring judgment. God will bring great judgment. Great judgment. Great judgment. Hallelujah. I want to pray. I'm really trying to ensure that we beat time. We can flow. Um, let me invite Mr. White. Is God showing you anything? Yes. Let me just invite Mr. White. Is God showing you anything? Hallelujah. Um... I was led to do this and thank God he called me up. The Bible says when the judgments are upon the earth, the inhabitants of the lands, they learn righteousness. Now I want us to do this. It's very prophetic. It's very, very prophetic. Some of you have been passing through so much in your families, so much pains and so much afflictions by the enemy. We are going to do this very prophetic. All the ministers who are going to join our hands and we are going to rain judgments upon all the things that have limited you for, for so long. For so long. It's enough. Enough is enough. When the judgments of the Lord are upon the earth, the inhabitants of the land, they learn righteousness. Wherever that um, affliction is coming from. Listen to me. Some of you, you will hear the news. You will hear the news from your villages and from wherever the affliction is coming from you are going to hear the news we are going to rain judgment upon all the afflictions of the enemy praise God that's just what I, I was led to do and I heard that very clearly in my spirit please Hallelujah. let's join our hands together and do this please okay, go ahead and let's pray let's do that quickly Bring justice to your people, O oh God. Banta bakosa tabrega de balabosh. Rakata tabaraka de bagasega de balabosh.
Lord, let the affliction end over the lives of your people. We forbid the scourging tongues of men in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. As I was uh, standing there, the Lord began to tell me something about heart condition. And as he was listening to me, I suddenly saw an angel. Uh, listen, whether you are uh, standing for someone or you are here with a heart condition, as, as the Lord was listening to me, I didn't just see healing. I see an angel with a heart all right, new heart. And as I was still pondering over it, suddenly I discovered the angels who were three of them. Three angels with a heart in their hands. I don't know who you are outside and inside. Just receive it right now. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Supernatural heart transplant now. 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 In the name of Jesus. That's one. Number two. I asked this uh, our sister that will have a baby to stay behind. I don't know. I, there's, some, there's a woman I see that is, you are, it's like you are desperate. Desperately need of a child. Please, wherever you are, please. The Lord said you should just come and carry this baby. Just say come and carry this baby. Whatever you are, I don't know. Just come. In the name of your standing for someone, please just come. Carry this baby. I say a miracle. It's a miracle. Yes, it's a woman. It's a woman. It's a woman. Carry hold on. How many of you want to hold the baby? For yourself or for your loved ones? In the name no, of No, no, no. Listen, listen. Stop laughing. This is a prophetic instruction. We are going to pray for all those who are trusting God for children. But this is specifically... Okay, now that you've seen the baby, you can... Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, we have to do this very fast. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm being told that there's someone being delivered right now from the spirit of suicide. Suicide, you've been, you've been thinking about death again and again. Always thinking about death. I declare that you're free right now hallelujah now I'm going to pray for everybody right now hallelujah we cannot go on and on because of time I'm going to pray for you right now now is the time for you to lift up whatever request you came with whatever picture I don't care what it is those who are streaming online hallelujah now is the time hallelujah I hear the cry of children children in my ears i hear the cry of children every barrenness right now in this place i take authority over it in the name of jesus we release miracle children in the name of jesus receive for yourself and for your loved ones in the name of the lord jesus even if they don't have wombs we give them brand new wombs in the name of jesus Hallelujah. Death cancellation. God is canceling deaths supernaturally. There are many of our parents, there are some of us who the debts that we owe and that our parents owe will only take a miracle. I know one of you, your mom was owing people and she's late right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I command supernatural death cancellation. Receive it now in the name of Jesus inside and outside receive it in the name of jesus Amen. hallelujah those of you seeking admission into abu promotion comes neither from the east nor the west nor the south it comes from god receive it now in the name of jesus 
Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Your jumps come and pursue me notwithstanding. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Right here we release supernatural marriages. Makaposo to prakata. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Receive for yourself and for your loved ones. There are a number of you who have suffered casualties in your families. In the name of Jesus, we break that bond of delay. In the name of Jesus. Fibroids, growths, cancers, tumors, die and go out of their bodies. In the name of Jesus. Every growth disappear right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Those of you trusting God for a financial miracle, Manasseh spoke about it. In the name of Jesus, please see. Take what we are saying serious. We are not just speaking to do a miracle. You will record testimonies that will shock you from this prophetic declaration. Let the Holy Ghost begin to move across families, across bank accounts, supernatural increase in the area of your finances. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Oh, for there is something called the anointing to prosper. It's not by mathematics. There is an anointing that makes it happen. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Terminal disease. Terminal disease. Every kind of terminal disease. HIV. Be gone now in the name of Jesus. Whether in this place or by prophetic connection. I come against that spirit. Be healed in the name of Jesus. SS. Your genotype. SS. In the name of the Lord Jesus. We change it. Now. We change it to AA. In the name of Jesus. Biology notwithstanding, we change it right away. Hallelujah. Every plague of death, every plague of death upon the life and the family of everyone, in the name of Jesus, you are free from it. Receive it in Jesus' name. Receive it in Jesus' name. Every plague of death, you are free from it in the name of Jesus. I see someone with a prayer request for a hole in the heart. Let that hole close now. Let that hole close now, right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let that hole close right now. Hallelujah, migraine headache, migraine headache, every kind of migraine be gone in the name of Jesus Christ. Many of you are trusting God for your school fees for the next session. For those of you who are students, you shall not see wind, you shall not see rain, yet you will not beg anybody for your school fees. The hand of the Lord will bring it. Receive it now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Many of you are trusting God to begin to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit with clarity and precision. In the name that is above all names, let your spiritual ears be open right now. Be open right now. Every spiritual ears be open to hear the voice of the Spirit. And let your eyes be open. Let your eyes be open. Let your eyes be open. Visions in the name of Jesus. Dreams in the name of Jesus. 
prophetic encounters in the name of Jesus. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it in the name of the Lord Jesus. A supernatural anointing to heal the sick. The Lord says to heal the sick. If you believe it, lift your hands. Lord, right now, in September miracle service, a rain of the healing anointing, receive it right now, inside and outside. The healing anointing, receive it, is coming upon you like fire in your hands. Receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it. God is going to launch entrepreneurs right now. I'm just flowing as the Holy Spirit is giving utterance. We'll soon be rounding up. Many of you will feel fire, literal fire, upon your head. Ideas that will shock you. Hallelujah. At the count of three, that's what God tells me. That it will come creativity that will shock you. One, two, three. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Inside and outside. Receive it. Shaka Pareko Sobaya. Supernatural ability for entrepreneurship. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Supernatural entrepreneurship ability. It's yours. It's yours now. Many of you will see pictures. Many of you will see things, businesses in your dreams. Jordan is stepping into a new level, a brand new level of creativity. Hallelujah. Hear me. The Lord says he's releasing an anointing that whoever you shake you will impart the favor of God. Now, please believe it. Impart the favor of God. I release that anointing. Now, receive it. At the back, receive it. Outside, receive it. The favor of God. The favor of God. The favor of God. The favor of God. Habits. Habits. I see all kinds of habits. Masturbation. Drunkenness. Lust. All kinds of demonic influences. Be free from them right now. 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 In the name of Jesus. Many of you hear voices in your rooms. You hear voices. That's what the Lord is telling me. Voices. And many of you see people. They talk to you and they mislead you. In the name of Jesus Christ, right now, I cause an eternal separation between you and these voices. In the name of Jesus. Every mental challenge that is impeding your progress in terms of your education or assimilation 
There are many people, you are not dull. You don't know what the problem is right now. In this miracle service, I release the super intelligence of the Spirit of God. Receive it. Receive it. It's yours. Receive it. Hallelujah. In one minute, I'd like you to express whatever you came here with that has not been mentioned, that you told God to meet that day, whether financial, whether whatever it is, lift up your voice in one minute and say, Lord, I receive now. Mention it. Mention it by faith. Mention it. Say, Lord, I receive. I receive for my family. I came with an expectation. Make sure you don't waste your stay here. Come on, pray. Lord, release it upon your people. All their requests. All their requests. All their requests. There are many supernatural things happening. There's no time for us to bring them, but you will go back, change, knowing that in September, miracle service, you encountered something. Hallelujah. The last set of people I'll pray for right now. Hallelujah. Manasseh said it, John Fah said it some one or two months ago and the Lord has been showing me there is coming a supernatural outbreak of wealth and prosperity hear me upon the body of Christ in Zaria I don't know hear me please I will not tell you what God has not said are you listening to me we have been announcing it but you see from this first October we are entering there is going to be a supernatural release of fearful finances God will give people instructions that don't make sense and those instructions will open fearful enviable doors and that's what I want to release right now I want to release it let me tell you something brothers until that anointing is upon you you will struggle for nothing just believe me until that anointing is upon you this is one of the major impartation all of you will live with if i told you forget anything you receive today a major financial impartation is going to come upon you for as many of you who have faith to believe this supernatural impartation will come upon you and this will be the major thing the landmark experience that you will leave September Miracle Service with. Father, you gave me this instruction. And under the unction of the Spirit of God, the one who confirms the word of his servants, I stand as your servant, and that everyone under the sound of my voice, young or old, male or female, in the name of Jesus, receive the power to prosper. Many of you don't have an idea of what that power is and what it does. Receive it right now. Oh, brothers, receive it. Don't reject it. Receive it. It's called the power to prosper. I release it from my heart. I release it from my spirit. Receive it, receive it, receive it. Function in it. The fullness of it. It will speak for you because of what God is doing in this season. You will step into a fearful, undeniable dimension of wealth and prosperity that even you cannot explain. If you believe it, shout Amen. If you believe it, shout Amen. If you believe it, shout Amen. If 
you're here and you're, you're born again, Jesus is not Lord of your life. Inside and outside, very quickly, I'd like to invite you. These signs and wonders are a mighty act of God. Right now, as we put our hands together, I'd like you to come out. You've not been born again, or you were once born again, but have derailed from the path of God. Inside and outside, leave your seat and run here. Very quickly. You're welcome. Inside and outside. As the Lord is speaking to you, please, I'd like you to leave your seat and come. They are coming. Appreciate them. Appreciate them. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.